patriarchy. 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 Bring back the patriarchy. Patriarchy. A society built by men for men. How? A system of male dominance. No, it's not. That's not true. At some point, you've probably stumbled upon the word patriarchy. Maybe at school, maybe at church, maybe in your social media feed after the Barbie movie or at a Thanksgiving dinner that got a little awkward. Regardless of where you first heard the word patriarchy, I'm going to take you on a journey today to discover the origins of patriarchy and how it still affects our lives today. I'm Amy McPhee Olivest. My journey to understand patriarchy began during my master's program at Stanford. We were learning about the foundations of philosophy and art and politics and religion and history. And I noticed that all over the world, throughout almost every era of time, men were on the top of all the social hierarchies. I wanted to know how and why that happened. These questions led me to read literally hundreds of books and talk with experts all around the world. I've learned fascinating, life-changing information. As I share my research with other people, the two things I hear most often are, why didn't I learn this in school? And how can I learn this now without having to read all of those books? So this video series will provide the TLDR for my research. We'll dive deep into patriarchy's origins and trace its development all the way through modern times. This way you'll be able to understand the historical facts and be able to talk about it more comfortably and confidently when it comes up in conversations. So whether you're a staunch defender of patriarchy, a fierce critic, or simply curious, stay with us as we unpack the huge questions. What is patriarchy? How has it shaped our world? And how does it continue to affect us today? Before we start, I want to establish two important points. First of all, I talk about patriarchy with love and compassion for people. And that means the whole human family, including boys and men. My favorite people in the whole wide world are my husband and our four children. And we want a world that is fair and allows all of them to thrive, our daughters and our sons. So whoever you are, regardless of your gender, I will be addressing you with kindness and respect. You're not only welcome here, you're needed in these conversations. Second, I talk about patriarchy with precision. Have you ever had a conversation where both of you just talked past each other and ended up feeling frustrated and misunderstood? I have. And a lot of times that happens because people lack a common vocabulary. If when I say patriarchy, I'm picturing the Taliban, and when you say patriarchy, you're picturing your sweet, gentle grandpa, it's likely that we're going to misunderstand each other and we won't be able to have a productive conversation. If only there were some sort of book or online reference that we could all go to for a common definition of what words mean. Oh wait, the dictionary definitions of patriarchy are a system of society or government in which the father or eldest male is head of the family and descent is traced through the male line, and a system of society or government in which men hold the power and women are largely excluded from it. Now let's go to the etymology, which means the roots of the word. Patri comes from the Greek and then the Latin pater, which means father. And archi comes from the Greek arche, which means domination, authority, or sovereignty. So literally, patriarchy means father rule. Just like monoarchy or monarchy means one person ruling, and anarchy or anarchy means nobody ruling, patriarchy means father rule, and it's expanded to mean men ruling over women. The way that it's practiced means that when a baby is born and someone says, it's a boy, that baby inherits elevated status in relation to women that will persist throughout its life just by virtue of being male. This little boy might grow up in a culture of misogyny, which in Greek means hatred of women. He might learn that men have to be in charge of women because women are inferior and untrustworthy, and so they need to be controlled. Another little boy might grow up in a culture of benevolent patriarchy. He might learn that men need to be in charge of women because women are weak and delicate and need to be protected. Misogynistic patriarchy and benevolent patriarchy come from very different beliefs and intentions, but both versions put men in a position of primacy where they get to define the terms for everyone else. Else. Now there may be some men watching this who think, wait, I don't feel this privilege and power. In fact, in some cases, I feel the opposite. And that makes sense because there are some things that patriarchy does not mean. 
Patriarchy does not mean that men have easy lives. A boy who suffers from chronic pain may have a much more difficult life than a girl who doesn't. A man who lives in poverty may experience much more hardship than a woman who has access to material wealth. In fact, in some circumstances like caste systems and racial hierarchies, men belonging to a lower caste can have challenges that on the balance make their actual everyday lives much harder than the lives of dominant caste women. Men in these circumstances may struggle in nearly every sector of society, except at home. These same men who operate in a race or caste-based hierarchy out in the world can come home and find themselves in a gendered hierarchy that gives them authority and privilege in relation to women of their same caste. And remember that women experience race and caste oppression too. And by the way, women also experience physical and mental illness and poverty. And on top of that, in patriarchy, women also experience gender-based oppression. Another thing that patriarchy doesn't mean. Patriarchy does not mean that all men have positions of leadership. Usually the way patriarchy works is that a small group of men presides over all the other men and they may exclude or oppress other men for a whole host of reasons that may not be fair at all and that cause real injustice and pain. We see this in the United States Constitution, which completely excluded men of color and men who were too poor to own land from civic participation. And it excluded all women because they were women. Next, patriarchy does not mean that every man uses his authority and privilege over the women in his life. Many men feel uncomfortable with this unearned privilege, and some men may even abdicate that privilege the way King Edward VIII abdicated the throne as King of England. But keep in mind that his birthright was his to keep or his to give away. And patriarchy doesn't mean that there are no women with power. Think of Queen Elizabeth or Oprah, or maybe your own very spunky grandma. These women do have a lot of power, but they don't have power because they're women. They have power in spite of the fact that they're women. Let's talk about that spunky grandma. She may rule the roost and everyone, including your grandpa, may defer to her in the family. But if she happens to be a member of a conservative religion, for example, then it's likely that on her wedding day, she pledged obedience to her husband. And just in case you're thinking that nobody pledges obedience in wedding ceremonies anymore, I attended a wedding in 2022 where the husband promised to love and cherish his wife and the bride pledged to love and cherish and obey her husband. Now you may be thinking, okay, sure, maybe most religions are patriarchal, but even if you're not religious, almost every sector in the secular world still has residual patriarchy left over from thousands of years of this ideology. We might think of it in terms of de jure and de facto. In Latin, de jure means of law. Think of it like the jury, de jure. And it means that an attitude or a policy or a practice is encoded in the law. And de facto means of fact in Latin. So things that aren't necessarily legal, but happen anyway. Even though certain attitudes or policies or practices aren't necessarily legal anymore, they can persist for centuries in our language, in our attitudes, in our relationships. I wanna emphasize one more thing that patriarchy doesn't mean. Patriarchy does not mean that men are bad or that women are good. Everybody has good and bad traits. Individual human beings are complicated. And as I said earlier, many men would never be misogynistic and they never ask to be in charge and they themselves are harmed by patriarchal structures. Remember, patriarchy simply means a system of society or government which privileges men so that they have power and it excludes everyone else. Now, if you've ever seen patriarchy at play, and you have, you might be wondering where it came from or maybe even asking yourself, if it occurs all over the world, is it just part of human nature? The answer is even more intriguing than you might think. So join us on our next episode of Breaking Down Patriarchy. How have you experienced patriarchy in your life? Drop a comment below, we're eager to hear your stories. I'm so excited to share this work with you and you can support the project by liking this video and subscribing to the channel for more content to come.